Today we're going to talk a little bit about indoor growing and how to optimize the systems that you're using. Uh, for today we're going to use the AutoPot system just for demonstration, but this is going to apply for other systems as well. First off, uh, these are over six gallons in size. So it is a 50% cocoa, 50% perlite mixture, but it is a number three perlite, which is a little bit chunkier. And you'll find that over the course of time on a larger container, that the chunkier perlite will work just a little bit better than a standard perlite grade. Secondly, the lights that are behind me here are suspended from yo-yo hangers and LED light fixtures oftentimes are rated with uh, what is called PPFD. Now the PPFD from a light is actually the usable light for the plant and if you were to suspend the uh, light above your plants, what you're going to find is, is that the optimal PPFD can be set uh, right about in this range, right over the canopy of the plant. Now, as the plant grows, of course, you're going to raise the light and try to maintain that uh, intensity over the top of the plant, which is uh, pretty much a given nowadays. However, here's what you have to keep in mind that the LED light, if the plant grows up closer, can actually burn the leaves of the plant or as you bring the light up, it does not have as much uh, penetration to come all the way down to the base of the plant. So you'll want to try to keep your plants uh, shorter, broader to take advantage of LED lights. Now, uh, the reservoir that I have over on the side, you'll notice that it is up on a uh, metal uh, stool, and that is uh, nice to be able to help gravity feed the nutrient solution down to the smart valves on each of these self-watering pots. The reservoir is around 12 gallons, and it is um, heavy to say the least, you know, around uh, eight to nine pounds per gallon of water. And so if you ever want to um, move this system around and you don't want to try to hoist that all up by yourself, what you can do is create a side tube with a T-fitting and this allows me to uh, drain that reservoir into a smaller bucket and carry it a bucket at a time. Uh, that way there's uh, a lot simpler ways to uh, go about standard um, maintenance ideas such as changing out your nutrient from perhaps a grow to a bloom or uh, cleaning out the uh, reservoir at the end of a, a grow. And a lot of the fittings that uh, I use, and you can save some money this way. For example, these rubber top hat grommets are available on Amazon. The um, T connectors that I use are found in the uh, drip irrigation system as well as the shutoff valves that I use. And speaking of these components, I got additional tubing because you do not want any of these uh, connectors to be tight because if you happen to move those around, you don't want uh, anything to pull loose and to flood water onto a floor. So when I put this together, I put the additional tubing in to give uh, breathing room to move around between the reservoir and the pots as well as pull the pots forward for the purpose of pruning or trimming. and. Uh, the shutoff valves, I used the extra ones. That way I could isolate each of these two containers. That way, for example, if I am growing in this container and it's complete and I'm uh, still growing on the other container, it allows me to uh, independently turn off the nutrient flow to that, pull the pot out and redo it for the next setup without having to shut the entire system down. Now, I also put a shut off where the reservoir uh, gradually uh, comes out about eight inches down from the uh, base there. And that allows me to turn that off in the event that I happen to be mixing nutrients inside of there. And I don't want any of those um, off balance nutrients to flow down to those pots. Uh, the nutrient that I use is uh, a Dynagro, and I use that at half strength because this is a non-circulating system. And you may not have the best water. Another tip would be, 
Epsom salts. Now, Epsom salts can be added around one teaspoon per gallon, and that will help keep your calcium from precipitating out into the bottom of the reservoir and perhaps clogging uh, tubes, as well as uh, wasting nutrient because you want all of those nutrients to be available to your plants. Velcro is a great uh, tool as well because speaking of uh, things like electrical, you do not want your electrical and your water to mix together for obvious reasons. And this keeps my uh, surge strip and my timers uh, suspended up on the uh, pole to the side here. And in the event that the reservoir ever gives loose, there's no uh, worry about the uh, nutrient water getting into the electrical current. Uh, water is a peculiar thing. Yes, it's easy to get shocked. It is far easier to get shocked when there's nutrient flowing uh, in the water. Also, it increases that ability. So um, be very careful. Keep those things separated if possible. Electrical components up, water components down, and don't mix the two together. So of the uh, s things that I've mentioned so far here in this particular setup, it is the uh, result of uh, growing over the years. And I would uh, say that if you are an adventurer and would like to make your own mistakes, go for it. It's a lot funner that way. But if you would like to learn from other people's mistakes, these uh, tips will certainly help you out.